Hello, my name is Jeff Flaherty. I'm a member of the Education Services Lab Support Team. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to enable Integrated Routing and Bridging Interfaces, or IRBs, on MX Series routers. So what is an IRB? An Integrated Routing and Bridging Interface is a logical Layer 3 interface used to route traffic between VLANs. It typically functions as the gateway IP address for end user devices on the subnet associated with the corresponding VLAN. IRBs must be associated with a bridge domain, or VLAN, and must have an operational Layer 2 interface in that VLAN to be operational themselves. Using IRBs, an MX series router can act as both a Layer 2 Ethernet switch and a router at the same time. To configure IRBs, we first define the bridge domain statement at the Edit Bridge Domains hierarchy. Then, set the specific bridge domain name and VLAN ID. Next, at the Edit Interfaces hierarchy, configure an interface in trunk mode and place it in the appropriate bridge domain using the VLAN ID list command. Ensure that you use protocol family bridge at the unit level. Finally, Configure the IRB at the Edit Interfaces hierarchy with the appropriate IP address and make it the bridge domain's routing interface at the Edit Bridge Domains hierarchy. Using the Show Bridge Domain Operational Mode command, you can view the bridge domain settings and verify that all of the recently configured interfaces are now associated with the appropriate bridge domain. Let's run through an example. In the diagram shown here, we have two hosts, host A using IP address 172.22.1.2 and an internet host using 192.168.13.2. The simple goal here is to get these two hosts, which are on different subnets and different VLANs, to communicate via ping. OK, let's get started. First, we'll configure a bridge domain named host A with a VLAN ID of 100 and another named internet with a VLAN ID of 141. Next, we'll configure the appropriate trunk interfaces and place them in their respective bridge domains. First, Gigabit Ethernet 112. We'll have a look at that. We see that looks good. Next, let's do Gigabit Ethernet 103. Set the interface mode to trunk. And we'll use the VLAN ID list to set it in the appropriate VLAN.
Now that that looks good, we'll configure the IRB interfaces with the appropriate IP addresses and associate them with the host A and internet bridge domains. Next, set the bridge domains. Now let's have a look at our new config. We can see the interfaces, both physical and IRB are appropriately configured, and so are the bridge domains. Now we'll commit and quit. Using the show bridge domain command, we see that Gigabit Ethernet 112 is associated with the host A bridge domain, and Gigabit Ethernet 103 is associated with the internet bridge domain as expected. They both have the correct VLAN IDs assigned. Next, using the show interfaces IRB terse, We can also see that both IRB interfaces are showing up up. To demonstrate the need for the layer 2 interfaces to be up up in order for the IRB interface to be operational, I'll disable GIGI 112 and show you the status of the IRB 100 logical interface after that. Commit that. You can see that while the admin status is up, the link status is down, making the interface inoperational. and we see the ping fails as expected. Let's roll back one and continue with our example. Recall that we have two hosts, host A and an internet host, each on different subnets and in different VLANs, and again, the goal here is to simply get these two devices to communicate via ping. On our host A device, let's make sure the default route is correct and we can ping it. As expected, 172.22.1.254. and the ping is successful. With that gateway verified, let's now ping the internet host from host A to ensure the IRBs on the MX device are doing their job. And we can see that ping is successful as well. 
With the ping to this internet host from Host A successful, we verified the configuration of the IRB interfaces on the MX router. This concludes our simple demonstration of how to enable integrated routing and bridging interfaces on MX routers, and I hope you found this helpful. Additional information about these features and many others can be found in the MX series Ethernet Services Router Solutions Guide and elsewhere on our website. Thanks for your time today. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.